now Take a step outside and seize the day now Set aside your worries, it's okay now The sun is here to stay Blue skies Feel the wind beneath you as you fly Good morning YouTube, it's Janita with Blessed the Press Creations And today I'm here with another attempt at this blanket that I've been trying to do a video for this is, I don't even know what number try it is for uh, trying to record the blanket, record the, the making of the blanket. Nevertheless, I have mostly everything done because as I said, I've attempted to make this video a couple of times. So what I think that I'm going to do is uh, try to walk you through the steps that I took to, to make the blanket. I am using the process that I described or talked about in the previous video and how I... <clears throat> What I do to be able to sublimate the larger items when I when when you could be considering it an all over print, I I just do not flood the background with color so that I have to tile anything, but I create all of my elements to fit within this a sheet of paper that I want to use. Uh, for something as big as a blanket, I'm going to be wanting to use a 13 by 19 paper. So what you see on my screen is the design that I have my, for my blanket. So what I start out by doing is I open up the Silhouette Studio and I have a business edition now, but I open up the canvas and I immediately start by titling my project. So this is the memorial blanket for my sister. It's not for her, but it, she's buying it for somebody. Um, I start out, I make the canvas, the one that is the canvas for Silhouette, uh, Silhouette Studio. I make that the size of the item that I'm going to be sublimating on. So this canvas, the gray area, is 70, uh, 50 inches wide by 70 inches long. And that's the size blankets that I typically use most of the time. Sometimes I have the um, 40 by 60, but typically it's 50 by 70 for a throw blanket. Um, and then I put a square in the center um, that is 10 inches smaller on each side. So the square that I, the rectangle that I um, put in the middle that I will be sublimating to the actual area that I'm giving myself to sublimate to is 10 inches smaller, 40 inches wide by 60 inches long. I do that because sometimes, and I've discovered this the hard way, I might miscalculate or misjudge the way something is going to um, flow out in reality. Now, this is in theory how the blanket will look, but in reality, <clears throat> I found that sometimes the blanket, depending on what brand you got, the quality of the blanket, sometimes things don't flow and it does not um, lend itself to a, a actual even rectangle. Everything is not etched, you know, it's not perfect. Um, sometimes the actual sewing on the edge of the actual blanket is off where it might be a straight one inch fold here, but then it hands out to be a little bit bigger or it goes in to be a little bit smaller. Sometimes things just are not, um, you know, 100%. So I give myself a lot of space, 10 inches on each side is a lot of space to work around. And then, um, within the design, typically I probably won't do it with this, but I do have some ideas on if I need to fill, if I feel like as I'm making it, this open space is too much. I will put some other smaller elements. I will not add any more photos because I want this just to really reflect, you know, her day with him at her wedding. And then, you know, just, just two extra pictures is great with him and her together. And then this memorial um, collage that I put together. This memorial collage background is something I purchased from a Facebook group that I'm in. So I, I just added his photo to it. So I modified it with the trace panel cut out one of the doves because they had a dove further down out here, which made the border of it too big. So I took that dove out and then um, cop, you know, copied it and put them around closer to her dad's picture and made this element a little bit different from what it came in um, the rest in peace uh, SVG file that I purchased. So this is what I'm going with with my blanket layout. There's no rhyme or reason. It's just a simple, you know, I think it looks um, pretty elegant um flow and since my theme is with a song i have these everything set to music notes 
okay? I, I'm trying to create a blanket or I'm trying to create an item that is going to be easy for me to replicate, easy for me to do if someone else say, oh, I want one of those blankets just like that or similar. I can keep this file, I can keep this as a template and then I can um, replicate it easily over and over and over again if somebody else should want one. I definitely don't want to be working hard, okay? I want to work simple and easy and then, you know, make myself duplicatable or do make my work duplicatable. So that's why I go with this. Okay, and I've sold quite a few blankets, so it's not even that people are not happy with, you know, different things. I've sold blankets that had stuff all over it, and then I've done some as simple as just, just a few little items. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're interested in doing these blankets, keep it simple. Do not make it complicated. I'm sitting on a blanket that I did not end up selling because I overcomplicated the design. And when I went to heat press it, you know, a section missed and didn't sublimate and then i went back and tried to fix it and messed the whole blanket up i was done the client was like leave it don't worry about it just send it like that and i went back and tried to fix it boom messed it up and now i'm sitting on money that i lost so do not over complicate your design keep it simple so this is the blanket that we're going to be doing i have this page open with all of the elements as i said i already did this blanket so this was the page where i was designing the elements and making them fit into the um 13 by 19 inch paper all right, this is what I wanted to also show you. I just I just um zoomed this out so you can see. So my idea was to set the blanket to the theme of Luther Vandross' song, Dance With My Father Again. So I went to wordart.com and I created this heart with the lyrics, well, some of the lyrics to it, the, the lyrics that I wanted to stand out. And it's the lyrics that said, if I could get one final glance, another dance with him, if I could steal one more chance, one more walk, one more something all that stuff one more a final step all that is in the background but i was able to manipulate the wording so that i would have how i'd love 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 to dance with my father again and if i could get another walk one final step you know um in here also it says i'd play a song that would never ever end how i'd love 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 to dance with my father again so that's the idea um, if you are not familiar with wordart.com, you can leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to show you how to go over and do this, do something similar to this. Um, but I use this a lot in, in, in quite a few of my, um, items that I sell. Okay. So that's what I just wanted to show you that I'm just going to go ahead and close that out and tell silhouette. No, I don't want to save it because I already have that down there and I'm going to not get silhouettes all excited and up and up people start sh shutting stuff down. Okay. So let's go back over to this one really quick and i want to try to keep this video short because i don't want it um all my videos to be super long so right here um what i have and i'm zooming it out so you can see it better this is my um canvas my my template for what i'm going to be printing to so i'm using 13 by 19 inch paper but i always make it a half an inch smaller on each side again to give myself some space because you know that your printer is not going to print to the full edge to edge so I take off a, a half an inch on all sides, right? So now instead of it being 13 by 19, it's 12 and a half by 18 and a half. Um, I'm going to, so I'm going to do the same thing I have on the other page. I have one going horizontal and then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to object rotate and make it a uh, vertical so that any of the layout layouts that are going vertical, I can size it up here. Any of them that are going horizontal, I would size it up here. This is not going to be the final print, but this is what I work along with my print over here. When I lay it out and make my design on the on the next page, page this one would be page two, um, canvas two. I I create my um, elements there. So now, because I already have all the elements already done, I'm going to just walk you through a real quick process. So I got my um, music notes and this stuff. This stuff here, this rest and eternal peace was a part of the rest and peace um, sub, uh, SVG files that I made, bought from the group. But this image here, I got it off the internet. And what I did, the border around it was much wider, meaning it was a lot of dead space. Like, let me click on it. I, I, um, so I, um, traced and detached it so that I would get it to be, the um, border would be a lot closer to the actual design. I might not be explaining that right, but if you need further explanation, please comment below. So I cre I went on to the internet and I just downloaded a 
music. I think I typed in music note SVG or PNG or something like that. This came up and I believe it did not have a background. But I just um, copy and trace the background of it. Trace and detach the background so that I can make it a little more tight. A little closer, you know, the border of it closer to the edges of it. And then I kept this one, the one that I trimmed down. I kept that in my background here and each time I needed it for an element, I just um, copy and pasted it with that. I'm not sure why these are attached to that, but y'all can go on over there. And then this is the element here. I didn't put one on that because it already had all that fanciness and goodness right there. Um, not sure why I have this two times. But let's go back to the blanket. Okay, so really quick, this this element, these two I just recently did up. I'm just gonna control copy that and bring it over to this page. All right. I'm not sure. Oh, let me look at the blanket because I see that the the way that the um the one that's going over. I'm not gonna delete. I know what I did. I didn't want to delete it because I wanted to fit it inside of the page. I'm gonna copy this and bring it over as well. Okay. And then I have that right. So I think I have all of my elements. So now. I'm going to, I don't need these two. Well, I'll just leave them for it in case I decide to use them. In case I decide to use them, those three things will be off to the side for me to use as a reference later. Okay, so any element that is in need of being horizontal, I need to make sure that it's going to fit within the um, 18 and a half by 12 and a half. And that would fit pretty good right let me click on it I know that it's gonna fit already because like I said I've already done this but I'm walking through it just for your purposes so um, what I did was like I, I came over here and I copied the element from here brought it over to this page and then sized it according to the 13 by 18 13 by 19 paper um, this background right here this is actually two of these little uh, music note things. I just um, put one here and I, you can see the curl for that one. And then this one here just to give it a little bit extra fancy. I put the heart in front of it and then um, grouped them together. And that's how I got that element. Once I got them grouped together, well, I started off by making sure that the heart was going to fit inside of the paper, top to bottom. And then I sized this accordingly, grouped them together, and that's how I got that element. Once I have the element situated and I know that it's going to fit inside of the paper, I put it off to the side and I get the next one. Um, if there's any other one that is horizontal like this one here. Now this one, because of the angle of it, I, of course you can see I have to turn it that way. A little bit sideways so that it'll fit okay and because I love just using my paper and filling it up because you never know what you might use something else for that's why those other little pieces was there I um, have made these just in case I just needed some extra goodness on the page okay this is a good example to show you of the extra space that I was talking about now you see how with this together like that, you can see that the border of this is way far away from that. So it's making it seem like my um, collage is 16 by 14. But what, what, what I typically do, and this is a good example to show you what I was talking about. I'm going to reduce the border around this collage. So I'm going to go into the trace panel, select the um, collage. I'm going to go up to as high as I can get it without it being blurry without it being oh 97 looks fine I'm going to say trace and detach now at the moment it said 12.08 by 16.824 it should be a little tighter and the actual size should be a little smaller let me zoom in and see if I can see it because I need to separate it from what it detached from Control shift the did I get it now Okay, 
So now I have that together. I'm just going to say group it together. And what should still be here, there is the background. You see? I'm going to delete that. And then I'll just continue to drag to see if I left anything behind. If I left any elements of that behind, it would still pick up. And then select that and the picture and group them together. Together, it's uh, almost 18 by 11 and some change. So that's a good size for me. I'm satisfied with that. Okay, guys. Um, and then these last two elements here, this uh, that I put together, I intentionally um, lowered the transparency on it. So it's kind of faded into the background a little bit. Um, and then this one, I didn't modify the picture so much because I really wanted to just capture her and her dad walking together. I, I intentionally lowered the transparency. And to do that, you go to your fill panel. And down here with transparency, I have it at 40. But if you wanted the picture to show 100%, then the transparency, you'd put it at 1. But if you wanted to, the picture to kind of fade into the background, you just lower the transparency, whatever amount that you want. So I thought 40 looked good. So that's why I had 40. All right, guys. So that's all of my elements on my blanket. Now, the next thing that I would do on this particular um, screen here, I would recreate the blanket and I would turn this to the size that I need on the um, blanket. So now this 13 by or 12, 12 and a half by 18 and a half rectangle, I'm going to make the size of it. The width is 40 and the height is 60. Uh, my blanket is not 100% white, but um, it, it's like a cream color. So let me just try to see if I can snatch a lighter hue. I'll just work with that for right now. I might interfere with this picture here. but So this is the size of my workspace on the blanket. You know that I have a 10-inch border around it on the sides. So I'm just going to attempt to recreate the, the, the layout that I have. All right, so there you have it, everyone. That is my basic blanket layout. Um, I, I think that I'm happy with the way that it really is. I don't want that to be up there to the point where it um, is in line with that. But I really think I like it. I don't think that it really needs anything else up top there. I might want to put that up a little higher just so it's kind of offset from the bottom. Everything is kind of flowing in its own own way. Okay, so in theory, my layout would work 100% perfectly. I, I really don't have to have this within this, but I'm just doing it for the sake of the um, video that I set this to be. Okay. Okay, so then um, this is saying my theory over here would work and have a decent flow if because this is my end process, what, I, what I'm looking to at the end of the day have on my blanket. So since I'm happy with this, we'll go through the steps that we follow to send the mock up and then we'll come back with the next step. Thank you guys so much for watching and staying tuned. Like, share, subscribe, follow, thumbs up comment, make suggestions, all that wonderful stuff. And we thank you so much for being subscribers. And we thank you so much for watching our content. Have a great day. See you at the next video.